Hello everyone, welcome to this video tutorial on finite element analysis a practical approach using answers. So uh, I am Shankar, assistant professor of mechanical from the IRJ College of Engineering, Madurai. So before starting any analysis, I would always suggest to look into these steps involved in a finite element analysis using any kind of TPA software. So the entire step can be classified into three, which is pre-processing, processing and post-processing. So the majority of our users work lies in this pre-processing stage where you have to define the problem, select the element, define the material property and section properties if required, model the problem, mesh the problem and decide the boundary condition and apply the boundary conditions. And after that, the solution where the uh, equations are being solved, the computer takes care of this. And finally, once the solution is done, the user has to review the result and conclude from the analysis and if required you can make any kind of design changes and prepare your report. So the majority of work for a, for a user lies in this reprocessing stage. Okay. So as I already told you this is going to be a series of video tutorials and we have completed this structural analysis module and we are now in this thermal analysis module. In thermal analysis, we have already completed this first uh, fin problem. So, temperature, heat distribution uh, in a fin using 3D elements. So, in today's video tutorial, we'll see about analyzing the temperature difference, heat flux, and thermal gradient in a composite body, which may be a composite wall, a composite cylinder, or a composite sphere. And we'll do this with the help of uh, 2D elements. So with no much delay, let me directly get to the problem. So first we'll try to solve a composite wall. So a composite wall is that uh, I have a rectangular structure of height 10 cm and I have the first uh, width is 5 cm and the thickness is 2 cm. So it's going to be in the third direction. And another material of different conductivity of the, uh, of, uh, width uh, 2 cm, height uh, 10 cm, and uh, thickness same 2 cm being attached with the uh, previous wall. And the third material again of cm, 1 cm, and thermal conductivity 0.5, and thickness same being attached with the uh, inner wall. So I have three layers of uh, wall here attached with one another. And the innermost temperature, so this can be considered to be a furnace wall or something like that. So, where I have a very hot uh, gases inside with a temperature of 900 degrees Celsius and with the convection coefficient of 150 watt per meter square Kelvin. And in the outside, I have an, it is exposed to the outermost layer. This layer it is exposed to the out, uh, uh, outermost atmospheric temperature of uh, convective coefficient 20 watt per meter square Kelvin with the atmospheric temperature 30 degrees Celsius. And along these sides, along the top and bottom edge, I'm not going to have any kind of convection. So along this line, I'll have a convection. Along this line, I'll have a convection. And in between, I'll have a conduction. And along the top and bottom edge, it is insulated. So which means there is neither convection nor conduction. So this problem can be solved as a 2D instead of 3D because the heat transfer along the length x. See, we have the, uh, so this is going to be the length, uh, along the length, the heat transfer or the temperature distribution varies. But, but consider the thickness, if you take the thickness, what, if the thickness is whatsoever, even if it is 2 cm or 20 cm, uh, the temperature along the z direction uh, in a particular line is going to be same. Say for example, the intermediate temperature, so uh, the intermediate temperature at this point, 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 so whatsoever point you take along this height uh, 10 cm in this intermediate temperature is going to be same. Similarly along the thickness, the intermediate temperature in this location along the thickness is going to be same. Hence I can reduce this model as a plane thickness model, plane model and I can solve it in 2D. Okay. Uh, the first step would be the problem definition which we have done. The second step would be the selecting the element. So as I am going to convert the model to 2D, I will use 2D elements which is solved for 455 which is a quadrilateral element and uh, it, the official name of quad 
quadrilateral element in answers for thermal analysis is plane 55. So plane element can be used for solving steady state transient of thermal analysis in quadrilateral element. Next question is plane 55 is a quadrilateral element. 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 Plane and uh, a section property as i'm going to model this in uh, 2d uh, the thickness 2 cm should be given as a uh, thickness in the real constant uh, menu of the answers right so which i'll do that and the step 4 will be modeling the problem so i'll have uh, the key points and i'll draw the lines and then i'll convert them into areas then i'll join the areas and uh, finally i'll get the model right then Meshing the problem, so mesh attributes. So here mesh attributes is important because I have three different materials with three different conductivity. So I have to give the mesh attributes. Then I have to divide the uh, problem into number of segments. Then I have to mesh the problem. And the final step is going to be the boundary condition. So boundary condition is here I have to apply this convection and here I have to apply this convection. So these two convections are my boundary conditions which I apply. Now let us see how to solve this problem in answers so you can open answers apdl menu by getting into start menu answers 19 and coming along the way you'll get a mechanical apdl once you click this you'll get the mechanical apdl menu here right so first preferences i'm going to solve thermal analysis so i'll click thermal and click on ok then i'll go to preprocessor element type add element let me select i'm going to solve 2d so hence i'll go to solid and quad four more 55 so that's my element i'll click on ok so this element can be solved or can be used for solving uh, 2d problems with thermal analysis but i have to make a small change here so get options along the here you'll find the element behavior it is given as plane right so there are three options plane axisymmetric and plane thickness uh, if you remember in structural uh, 2d analysis we would have had plane stress plane strain axis and trick plane stress with thickness these are the four options that would have been available here in a 2d structural element 2d structural uh, same plane element what but structural analysis whereas here we have plane which means the thickness is very much negligible and we can oh, omit that axis symmetric it is for uh, objects which have a center axis and which have a uh, clear revolution of uh, symmetry of ob object and plane thickness this is similar 2d but when the thickness uh, cannot be discarded as such uh, in our case we can't just uh, uh, ignore this thickness uh, because we need the cross-sectional area to be computed to solve the problem if you do not give this thickness and if you select plane as the option then the uh, thickness would be taken to be as unit right? unit uh, uh, one unit square thickness would be taken whereas here i have a significant thickness two centimeter so hence i'll choose the option plane thickness and I'll click on OK and I'll close. Now, in order to, uh, as I have given here plane thickness, I have to uh, give the thickness uh, in my real constant menu. Go for add, edit, or edit. Go to add, click on OK. So here it will be asking for thickness is a depth, which is 2 centimeter. So I have to keep a unit consistency along the way. Um, uh, so here the unit is in watt per meter, and here the H value is also in meter, whereas my uh, length units are all in uh, centimeter. So uh, either I have to change this to meter or centimeter whatsoever. Um, I'll do one thing. I'll convert this all these centimeters to mm, and also I'll uh, convert this h and k value to mm. Uh, whereas these coordinates uh, that I have given in black color, they are in uh, meters, zero comma zero point one meter comma zero, here zero point zero five meter comma zero comma zero. But don't worry, we'll change that to we'll keep the unit system of uh, length to be mm, right? So hence uh, I have to give a thickness of 20 mm. So here thickness is going to be 20. And let me close this. Next, let me add my materials. So I have to add three materials. Click right? uh, on material properties, material models. Go for thermal conductivity. Click on isotropic. So the first material is going to be 45 watt per meter Kelvin. So in order to convert this to mm, I have to divide by thousand. So which should be 45 into 10 to the power minus 3. 45 e minus 3 which, which will be 45 into 10 to the power minus 3 okay then click on okay next close out material new model and then click on okay then i have to add the second material which is 5 watt per meter kelvin so which is 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 watt per 
E amount Kelvin. So 5 E minus 3 watt per E minus 3 watt per amount Kelvin. So as you already know that uh, you do not, not need to convert this Kelvin to into degree Celsius as we have degree Celsius here because this Kelvin in the conductivity and this Kelvin in this conduct uh, in the uh, convective heat transfer coefficient uh, it is nothing uh, but the temperature difference. Right? Uh, so this Kelvin would have come due to the formula where you have uh, Newton's law of cooling says that uh, uh, HCA del D. So there is a change in temperature. Whereas this conductivity formula for uh, Fourier's law of heat conduction says that minus Ka dt by dx, which is again dt, which is temperature difference. So the temperature difference is same in degree Celsius or Kelvin. So 45 watt per meter degree Celsius and 45 watt per meter Kelvin or similar. You don't need to convert into degree Celsius into Kelvin by adding some 273.15 uh, 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 factor to it. Right. So please be careful with that. Don't do that mistake. Right. Okay. So I have added my second material. My third material is going to be a 0.5 watt per meter Kelvin. So I'll go for material new model. So I'll click on OK. Then I'll click on isotropic, which is 0.5 watt per meter Kelvin. So 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 watt per mm Kelvin. So I'll click on OK. I'll click on close. Now I don't I do not need to add any sections, which I'm because I'm going to draw uh, two-dimensional model and the thickness has already been given in real constant. So directly I go for modeling. Let me create. So there are two ways to create this one, one by creating the key point, then joining them with line, then converting them to areas. Uh, this takes uh, three steps, key points, lines, areas. But directly you can draw the area instead of doing this step. Uh, so whichever you like, you can follow that. So go for rectangle by two corners. So my starting point would be um, zero and zero. The width of sorry, the width of my first section would be. So my first section has a width of. 5 cm and height of 10 cm. So, in, in order to give this an mm, I'm going to give it as 50 mm cross 100 mm. So, width is 50 and height is 100 mm and come okay. So, this is my first section, and my second section will start at this location, which is uh, 50, 0, and will have a width of 20 mm and a height of 10 mm. Sorry, uh, we'll have a uh, width of 20 mm and a height of 100 mm, right? So again, go to corners. The starting point for, for this section would be 50 mm, which is the end of first section, 50 comma 0, and my width would be 20 mm, and my height would be 100 mm. Okay. So this is my second section. You can see a white line dividing these two sections, and my third section would start from this location, the uh, end point of uh, the second section. So, which would be uh, 50 plus 20, 70 mm. So, my starting point would be 70, 0. And my width of my section is 10 mm. And height of my section is 100 mm. So, I have 1 cm uh, width and height of 10 cm. So, 10 mm cross 100 mm. So, I have added my three sections. Right? So, once this is completed, you may see that these three sections are separate. Right? If I continue, okay, the modeling stage is pretty much completed. Then I have to get to machine, then I have to apply the model condition and I have to solve. If you do this, there is one more thing that you have to do. But if you forgot to do this and if you continue as such, the results will not be good. The results will be completely wrong because, uh, so you are going to apply a temperature and convective coefficient here. So the temperature will automatically get uh, attached to this wall. So this wall is the first uh, area where the temperature is going to get applied. So as the temperature is applied here, it is going to get conducted here, it will get conducted here, conducted here, conducted here, it will come up to this location. In order for the temperature to transfer from this material to this material, you have to join these two materials. You have to basically attach this, glue these two materials together using uh, a gum sort of thing, right? So these two materials, so we have three materials, so first section, one material, second section, another material, third section, uh, third different material. And I have to glue this all the materials in order for the temperature to cross this boundary from one material to another material. Then it has to conduct from here. Then it has to conduct from this material to the other material. If you forgot to, forgot to do this step called as gluing, then the temperature will transfer from this uh, transfer in this first material. It will get conducted along the first material and it will get stopped at this location. It will not get conducted beyond this point. It will not get transferred to the second material or it will not get transferred to the third material. So in order for that to happen, you have to glue this material together. So in order to glue the material together, get to modeling, 
go for operate right you have booleans uh, once you come here you will find the option called as glue right so gluing is an operation which is used to, to attach it is not used to, to join so please be careful in that so if i join this material then i have to use the option called as add but if i join this material then uh, instead of three different section i'll get a single section but that is that is not what i want because that is not what i want because I, ha I need to have three different materials i need to have three different areas but the results from the first area should get converted or transferred to the second area and the results from the second area should get transferred to the third area so this is what i want so in order to do that uh, you should not join these areas instead you have to glue these areas so that's what you do here so booleans glues so i have to glue the area so select the click on area so i'll click the first second and third area. i have to add all these i have to sorry i have to glue all this area so i'll i'll not use the word add or join i'll use the word as glue so uh, i'll glue this area so once i uh, select all this area and i click on okay okay you can't pretty much find anything that has happened in the screen right but in the background all these areas have been glued so if you forgot to do this step then your answer would be abruptly wrong the conduction will happen only in the first material and the temperature will not get transferred to the second or third material and your uh, conduction pretty much stops here right which is uh, not which is uh, uh, the one uh, you don't want to happen the temperature has to transfer all the way along the wall to the same then connect, uh, convection has to happen at the same so hence in order to have this in order for this to happen you need to have this blue option being done here so don't forget this okay now let me go to meshing so i have to give mesh attribute because i have three different materials so i'll give mesh attributes so in i have to apply the material in this area so i'll click pick pick the areas i'll select the first area i'll click on apply so first area my material is one my real constant is one my element uh, number is one so uh, i don't need to change all these other parameters i only need to uh, ensure that my material number is correct so my first material number is 45 watt per meter kelvin which is pretty much okay so i'll click on okay next pick the areas i'll select my second area i'll click on okay now my material number is 2 for my second area, I'll click on OK. Then I'll go to picked areas, I'll select the third area, and the third area has a material number of 3. And all the other parameters remain the same for all the three areas the plane, thickness, every other thing remain the same. So I don't need to change that. So my material number is 3 here, and I'll click on OK. So I have given the mesh attributes, then I have to define the size. So I'll go to size control, manual size, lines, and pick the lines. So what I'll do is that I'll divide the lines as per the length of the element right so it's not the thing that you have to do it compulsorily you can divide it into any number of elements but for the sake of easiness what i'll do is that i'll divide the lines as per their length right so here the first uh, line so this bottom uh, line and this top line for the first section uh, it has a length of 50 mm so i'll divide the number of elements to 50 okay then i'll select the second line bottom and top line i'll click on ok and uh, it is uh, the length of the second line is if i'm not wrong it is 20 so <coughs> so i'll divide the number of sections to 20 and i'll click on ok and the third line i have the bottom and top line i'll select on ok and it is divided into 10 so i'll click on 10 and i'll click on ok but it's not the thing that you have to do necessarily as what i'm doing you can divide it to any number of higher number of elements and you'll get the same results it's not nothing uh, needed and i'll select all these vertical lines and i'll give some uh, uh, value which is uh, the height of these uh, 10 centimeters which is 100 mm so i'll divide it into 100 elements right so i have divided the number of elements as such equal to the number of length of elements so i have divided this line uh, this line has a length of 50 mm and i have divided it into 50 uh, elements which means each element will have a length of 1 mm right so you can do whatever you want right and now i'll go for mesh then i'll mesh the area and select three and i'll select first second and third i'll click on okay so you can, you can find a neat mesh here right i have a neat uh, quadrilateral uh, square shape uh, shape here right okay and that's good now i'll get to the boundary conditions so meshing loads define loads and i'll click on apply i'll select on thermal so I have to give two convection, one at this uh, line along this line, leftmost line. Other, uh, the other uh, other thing that I have to give on this rightmost line. So temperature, 
convection on lines i'll select the this line and click on ok and my fluid coefficient connective heat transfer coefficient is uh, 150 watt per meter square kelvin and my temperature is 900 degrees celsius so my convective is 150 watt per meter square so i have to convert it to mm square mm square so it will be 10 to the power minus 6 and bulk temperature is nothing but my uh, temperature concerned with this h value which is 900 degrees celsius here so i'll give 900 degrees celsius and i'll click on ok Similarly, I have to apply a convection along this line. So I'll select here, I'll click on OK. Uh, and here 20 watt per meter square and the temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. So 20 watt per meter square. So not to convert into a mm square, 20 E minus 6, and my temperature is 30 degrees Celsius, which is also associated with this convective heat transfer coefficient. And I'll click on OK. So I can find some arrow mark indicating that some convection is being applied there. So the direction has no significance, so don't worry about that. It's just a symbolic representation that something is being applied here, that's all. So along the top and bottom, there is no uh, convection or any other thing. So I'll leave it as it is and I'll leave it blank, which means it is being insulated, right? Once that's all, the boundary conditions are being applied, then I have to solve my problem, get to solve, and kind of tell us, and click on OK. Yeah, solution is done. Okay, now let me see the results. So, what are the results am I interested in? I'm going to see the temperature distribution. I'm going to uh, see how the temperature is, what is the minimum temperature at this location. Here I have 900 degrees Celsius. So, let me check the minimum temperature at this location. And I have to find the temperature at this intermediate locations. Then, I have to find the uh, heat transfer rate Q. What, what is the overall heat transfer rate along, the, uh, uh, along this uh, length of the... Uh, maximum heat transfer rate along the length of this uh, composite wall. Then I have to find the thermal gradient. Thermal gradient means uh, del T or dt by dx. So that is temperature gradient. So change in temperature to the length of the segment. So uh, let me take the temperature at this point and let me take the temperature at this point. So let it be T1 and let this temperature be T2. So T1 minus T2 divided by 5 centimeters. That will give me the thermal gradient of the first section. And uh, this uh, this is T2 and this intermediate temperature is T3. So T2 minus T3 divided by 2 cm will give me the thermal gradient of my second section. And T3 minus T4 divided by 1 cm will give me the thermal gradient of my third section in what the uh, centimeter uh, unit. Right? Okay, so that's what I'm going to check all these three things. Uh, general force processor, let me see the plot results. Counter plot, nodal solution. So, dual solution, nodal temperature, let me click on OK. Uh, here you can see, so the temperature is getting, getting conducted along the line, conducted, 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 and it has been transferred from this section to this section, right? If the gluing operation is not done, not done, then the heat transfer will pretty much stop here, and these both sections would look blue in color, right? The, uh, which indicates there is no heat transfer being done, right? So, only the glue operation would uh, find, a, uh, give you a results like this, right? So the temperature is getting conducted, 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 and uh, the, so the minimum temperature is 561.929 uh, degree uh, Celsius at this location. And uh, this temperature I have applied a 900 degree Celsius with the convection. So it has, and this wall has a temperature of 829.076, and this extreme wall has a temperature of 561.929. In order to find this intermediate temperatures, uh, I'm going to use an operation called as path operation which i have already taught you earlier in in uh, problem so i'll define a path i'll buy nodes i'll select this end node and i'll select this extreme node so along the same line along the same line you have to select so you should not select this node and here you should not select this node then uh, these two nodes get connected like this the diagonal will get connected and the temperature uh, distribution will be would be shown along this diagonal which you don't want you need to find the temperature distribution along the straight line so i'll select these two extreme nodes and i'll click on ok and the number of uh, let me give a name as T M P T M, and uh, let me give the number of data sets. So I need the in total length of the segment is five centimeter plus two centimeter eight eight plus one uh, sorry five plus two seven seven plus one is eight centimeter which is eighty mm. So I'll give the number of data set to be eighty. So which means for each and every mm I'll get my temperature value right. Okay. And now I have to define my path. So I have defined uh, I have already defined the path. I have to plot. Okay, I have to map onto path so I can find once you click on plot the path, it will show you the uh, uh, points where which is going to get connected. And this is my temp and map onto path. So I have to select the solution and temp and let me give my 
button here sorry so it's just a name you can keep whatever you want i'll click on ok now i'll uh, plot the fourth items so first let me list the fourth items which is 10 and i'll click on ok we can find so for every one mm along the length we can find the temperature so my first uh, section ends at 50 mm so at the end of 50 your temperature sorry, at the end of 50 your temperature is 817.26 and the end of second section would be 70 mm so 70 mm my temperature is 774.70 and at the end of third section which is 80 mm you have 561.93 and the starting first section would be 829.08 so you can compare all these four temperature with that of the theoretical value which would pretty much exactly match the same value even though i have not done the theoretical calculation for you to compare but uh, try to do that uh, and try to check whether these answers are getting matched and pretty much 100 percentage and uh, pretty much 200 percentage sure that this answer would exactly match with the theoretical answer right so you can try it on your own uh, so you can find any heat and mass transfer data book and it'll, it'll have the formula for composite wall and uh, you can find the temperature and uh, heat transfer rate and thermal gradient all those from like all, all those formulas you can find in that book right okay you can also plot this for uh, you can also plot the uh, uh, temperature distribution in a graph so click on on graph click on temperature you can find here so this is here so this is the first section so the temperature is getting transfer 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 and suddenly there is a sudden drop in temperature because the thermal get, uh, conductivity is getting decreased and again you can find a very sudden steep drop in temperature because the thermal conductivity is very much decreased at this point right so this is uh, where you can find a neat graph save this graph so you don't have to do that go for cost control write my profile you know twitter like and save this graph and also save this list of path items also save this uh, uh, Path items right along the length you have to save the entire uh, list in a notepad file and you have to put it in your report and then uh, we, okay this is how we can see the temperature distribution next we have to see the uh, thermal gradient so click on thermal gradient and okay so this is the thermal gradient first section second section and third section so even uh, even though if you find the same color in these two sections but uh, there's slight difference in these two so and if you want to clear here a clear answer so get to uh, list results go for uh, nodal solution click on thermal gradient and click on thermal gradient to sum and click on ok so here you can find the thermal gradient sum so the first section will uh, have up to uh, so 0.23641 and uh, will get the same value for all the nodes in the first section and there will be a change in value here so you can find it is getting same but at a particular location will get changed to the second section so just one two three six four one ah, here ah, here you can find a second change in value which is 2.1271 that is for the second section and then uh, even if you come down ah, here you can find 21.271 that is for the third section so by using this list results option you can find the exact results uh, which you can't find in this uh, uh, colored plot and uh, using this colored uh, uh, values along the uh, bottom of this image right you can use this list result option so also save this image also go for a uh, control write meta file and invert white black and save the thermal gradient and the third thing that you have to see is thermal flux which is heat flux which is q by a watt per meter squared in. the unit of thermal gradient would be watt per mm and unit for thermal flux would be what per mm square okay so here find the maximum uh, heat transfer rate of 0 0.010639 watt per meter square right here the meter square would be the cross sectional area which is the thickness and the height and if you divide that with the q you'll get the qf which is heat flux watt per meter square heat transfer rate divided by the cross sectional area right and even if you check this with the theoretical answer theoretical answer it is going to match the same also save this image go for power control right meta file invert white or black and save this image so these are the three things that you have to see the temperature distribution thermal gradient and uh, heat flux or thermal flux whatsoever it is so these are the three things that you have to find so this is where our first problem gets uh, completed so the composite wall is over right next we'll see how to solve a composite cylinder right so here I have uh, I've taken the same ex ex exact condition as before in the composite wall except instead of thickness this is get, going to get revolved around the center axis and the radius 
which is uh, 10 centimeter uh, for the uh, innermost line. So it is going to uh, uh, revolve around the center axis and uh, as you can imagine, if it gets revolved, you will find a hollow cylinder, right? Hollow cylinder is what you will get. Three hollow cylinders placed one within each other and placed close to each other. And uh, this is a uh, condition of a composite cylinder. Now, how do I solve this? So, let us see, right? Okay, now let us see how to solve this composite cylinder problem in ANSYS. So, in order to do that, okay, uh, let me save this file. So, in order to save an ANSYS file, the best way is to save the session editor. I'll copy this session editor, okay, and I'll put it in a notepad. I'll open a notepad and I'll paste it here and I'll save this. Um, and so it is composite wall. Okay, I'll save this now. Let me close the answers and let me start new. Do not click that and click on OK. Yes, right now. Let me again get to preferences thermal and OK. Now, pre processor. So, this is pretty much same. So let me tell you where it gets changed. So in previous case, we converted the 3D problem of a composite wall into a 2D by taking that the temperature distribution along the thickness is pretty much going to be the same. So we took the option of plane thickness. Here, this cross section is going to get revolved around this axis, and this simplification, which I already told you, is a, a simplification called as axis symmetric. So if we have a particular cross section, and if it's get revolved around a particular axis to get a complete 360 degree solid. Then you can use the option of uh, axis symmetric to simplify the model of 3D uh, revolving cylinder to a uh, 2D cross section uh, cylinder. So here I am going to use the option of axis symmetric. So I'll add the element, uh, the same solid quad core node source, and I'll click on OK. And instead of plane, I have to select the option of axis symmetric here, and I'll click on OK, and I'll click on close. So as I've given the option of axis symmetric, I do not do, I do not need to give any kind of thickness as such. So I'll directly add my material properties, go to material models, thermal, conductivity, sorry, uh, conductivity isotropic, and my first material is 45 E minus 3 watt per mm Kelvin. So uh, the, all the other parameters I have taken from the same composite wall. The only thing is that it is getting revolved. The H value, everything is same. The thickness, height, everything is same. So I'll keep as it is. Okay. And I'll add the second material. I'll click on OK. And second material has a... Uh, value of 5 and the third is 0.5 so 5 t minus 3 watt per mm kelvin and the third material is 0.5 e watt per mm kelvin so 0.5 e minus 3 watt per mm kelvin and click on ok and click on close right okay. now i'll directly go to section i do not need to add any sections i'll directly go to modeling and click on create areas rectangle by two corners so here i have to take the first area so this point actually this point uh, whereas I'll take get the modeling stage active. So this point would be 0, 0, 0, 0, and along the length you'll get the first point to be 0. Point. Here I have given in meter, that's why it's a 0, 0.1 comma 0, 0, 0, because the radius is uh, 10 centimeter. So hence uh, 0 0.1 comma 0, 0 meter. So here I'm going to give it in mm. So the starting of first section would be 10 centimeter, which is 100 mm and y is 0 and width of the first section is 50, uh, 5 cm which is 50 mm and height is 10 cm which is 100 mm right and click on ok so you can find here so this point is 0 comma 0 the first section it is at uh, the radius of 10 cm hence you get uh, uh, hence, hence you get the first section uh, distance away from the uh, axis right so uh, keep one thing in mind when, whenever you select in, uh, select an axis symmetric, uh, if it is uh, even, uh, structural or thermal, it doesn't matter. But the axis symmetric always revolves the object only about the vertical y-axis, right? If you draw the object in such a way that it has to revolve around x or z axis, it doesn't do that. It will always revolve the object only about the vertical y-axis. So we'll keep that in mind while modeling the problem. So the starting point of second section would be this location, which is. Uh, 100 mm for this length and 50 mm for this length. So my starting point would be 150 mm and y it is 0 and my width of the section is uh, 2 cm which is 20 mm. Height is 100 mm. Okay. 
I think yes. Correct. It will come okay. My second section is added here, and the starting point of my third section will be this location, which is uh, 100 mm, 150 mm, 120 mm. So it's 170 mm actually. So 170 mm tab zero. Tab width of the section is uh, 10 mm, and height of my section is 100 mm. And click on okay. Okay, so I got here section three sections here. Also here, you should not forget to glue these sections, or else my Temperature will not get transferred from one section to other. So operate booleans glue get to areas select the three areas and click on OK. So you can't find anything that has happened here in the background, but it will definitely be saved. So don't uh, think that once you glue you should have some indication that it has glued. So it will not show any kind of indication, but you have to do this option of glue, right? Okay, then I'll go to meshing uh, and mesh attributes. I'll give my picked area, so I'll select my first area, apply its first material, apply. I'll select my second area, apply. I'll select the second material, apply. And I'll select the third area, okay. I'll select my third material and select okay. So all the three image attributes have been completed. Then I have to give the size control. Uh, pick the lines, I'll select these two lines, I'll click, click okay. I'll uh, select the number of divisions to be 50 and okay. But this is not what you want. Uh, this is uh, uh, not. Uh, this is uh, one thing that you do not do not need to follow as such. You can use whatever element you want. Say I'll just show you. So I'll just, just select all the other lines, right? And except except these lines, I've selected all the other lines. And uh, let me give a value of 100 mm instead of giving the exact length. I'll give the length of 100 mm to all the elements, all the lines. Now I'll mesh it. And I'll get the pretty much same result. So the only thing is that mesh should be fine. It doesn't matter that uh, mesh should uh, be exactly as the length of the element. It doesn't matter. So I'll select mesh and you can find here. Uh, so here it may it shows the white color, but uh, actually there are elements there. Uh, I'll just zoom the model through this. Uh, so you can find very small elements are being meshed. That's why. Uh, when you zoom out all these uh, elements get uh, close enough that it shows a white color uh, uh, area here but it is actually not white it is actually the number of elements is so small that it is very much close to each other and once you zoom out it is showing as white color right okay now i'll go to load apply conviction on lines i'll select the first line i'll select on ok which is 150 uh, e minus 6 and minor temperature is 900 and click on OK. And my outer convection temperature so it is uh, 20 watt per mm squared. So 1 into E minus 6 watt per mm squared Kelvin. And my temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. So 30 degrees Celsius and I'll click on OK. Right. So these are the above degree conditions. Directly let me solve the problem. So as you can recall, the minimum temperature in last case was around 561 something. Let us see what would be the minimum temperature in this case. And we'll both process power crystals, control plot, nodal solution, and I'll select the nodal temperature and click on OK. Ah, here you can find the minimum temperature gets changed. Even though the diagram pretty much remains the same, the uh, minimum temperature for the last case was 561 at this extreme end. Here it has uh, been reduced to 520 because uh, the surface area of a uh, cylinder is, is very much higher than that of a surface area of a wall composite wall that's why you get a very much improved heat transfer and the minimum temperature is getting decreased here also here you can find the innermost temperature was around 800 something in the previous case it has uh, decreased to 782 because you will have a increased here. so imagine that this is going to get revolved so i'll show that uh, you can do that here so we'll go to plot control style symmetric expansion uh, 2d axis symmetric so if you give full expression and click on OK, okay, uh, let me give show it in three. Uh, I'll just zoom out. Okay, view. Uh, here you can see this is the composite wall, the three walls, the first wall, my second wall, my third wall. It will get revolved like this. You can also save this image too. Save this image, part control, right meter file, save the image. It's also save the previous image, also save the three dimensional image here, right? And uh, this is how the composite. So you can find the uh, inner area, the inner circumferential area for a cylinder is uh, very much higher than that of a wall. So also the outer circumferential area for a cylinder is higher than that of a wall. That's why 
the in increased area leads to increased uh, heat transfer rate and decreased temperature so that's what is evident from this results right okay now i'll switch back to my 2d view I'll go to thermometric 2d axis and uh, i'll select no expansion i'll click on okay so you can try this half expansion so it will only show you the half of the cylinder right so you can also keep this uh, expansion so whatever you like you can do as such i'll get to 2d and as far as now i'll click on no expansion and click on okay and now get to the front view and i'll split the view okay also save this two dimensional image also right and also uh, save the three dimensional rotated image so that uh, it can be evident that this is a uh, definitely a uh, composite wall right okay and uh, next you can also check the corresponding uh, thermal gradient and also the corresponding uh, thermal flux so all this thing you can find it here right so the thermal flux is getting varied along the line the maximum value is 0 0.0117566 and it's getting changed so you can compare this maximum value with that of your uh, theoretical value right so uh, the temperature if you want to find the intermediate nodal temperatures so if you want to find this temperature this temperature this temperature and you have to compare all this intermediate temperature and the extreme end temperature with that of the theoretical answer so in order to do that you can do the same path operation which I've already uh, showed you in the previous uh, uh, composite wall. Uh, select these two nodes, define the path temperature, and uh, divide it into uh, the, uh, the total like this 80. So, hence, uh, divide the number of data points to 80 such that for each and every mm, you will get your data. Right? So, once this is uh, completed, path operation completed, you will get the intermediate temperatures. Right? Similarly, you can use the option of less results, nodal solution, and thermal gradient to get the individual uh, thermal gradient along the value which right? so will find the values okay you can compare these values too okay now this is where the second problem of a composite cylinder gets completed so this is my composite cylinder that is getting completed here now i'll move on to the third problem which is a composite sphere so it is also having an axis of symmetry and this all these three uh, composite uh, sections uh, uh, yeah semicircular ring sections if you revolve this section around the center axis you are definitely going to get a sphere like model right that's what i'm going to do in this third stage now let me save this session editor file for future reference copy this i'll open notepad and i'll put on save click on yes and let me save it as composite cylinder right let me say okay now i'll erase this and i'll show you how to draw a composite sphere okay go to thermal click on okay so all the other things are same okay here also you'll have a symmetry of rotation so solid quad core node which is a plane 2d element and the options change the plane to axis symmetry here also you're going to have a central axis about which a section is going to get rotated to get the full three dimensional solid so it is axis symmetric okay once it is axis symmetric you not, need not add any thickness i'll go to material property uh, so the material properties i can also find here i have taken the same section with the same thickness in every other data so you can find the same values you can find the same thickness so 10 so it is radius 15 which means the first section is of 5 centimeter so the first section is uh, this is 15 and the second uh, radius is 17 so the second section is of 2 centimeter and 17 and the third is 18 which means the third section is of 1 centimeter which is pretty much same as in the case of a composite cylinder or a composite wall so the same data i have taken the only thing is that here the geometry is getting curved all the other uh, things uh, the thermal conductivity the, the conductivity terms of rate everything remains the same right so I'll go to thermal conductivity isotropic and 45 E minus 3 watt per mm Kelvin and then material new model okay isotropic the second is 5 E minus 3 watt per mm Kelvin and the third is 0.5 right okay let me give the third value as 0 0.5 watt E minus 3 sections oh sorry no you don't you don't need to add any sections modeling then here instead of rectangular area i have to create semicircular rings for that go to circle create an option called as partial analysis so here it will ask for a uh, x comma y this is the center point of the circle which is zero comma zero let me take the zero zero and uh, so zero zero means uh, the point is going to be located at this 
point so this is my 0 comma 0 this location is going to get be my 0 comma 0 and uh, my first radius is 10 centimeter and, and my second radius is 15 centimeter which means 100 mm and 150 mm right so the inner radius is 150 mm my outer radius is uh, so inner radius is 100 mm my outer radius is 150 mm and uh, uh, as you know that this is going to be the positive x-axis this is positive y-axis this downwards is negative y-axis and this leftwards is negative uh, x-axis right so this is 0 degree this is 90 degree this is 180 degree and uh, this is uh, 270 degree or uh, I can take it as minus 90 degree right so it is positive 90 degree it is minus 90 degree right so the first semicircular ring starts from minus 90 degree and goes all the way to plus 90 degree so ANSYS always takes the options in anti-clockwise direction rotation in anti-clockwise direction uh, by default hence uh, I have to start from the lowermost and you have to get to the uppermost so minus 90 degree to the topmost is going to be plus 90 degree so that is the angle starting and ending angle so the r1 radius one is the inner uh, uh, radius which is 100 mm and red 2 is the outer radius which is 150 mm and the starting theta one angle is minus 90 degree and my ending theta angle is 90 degree so instead of minus 90 you can also give 270 and you'll get the same so see they start from minus 90 and goes all the way to plus 90 now create the second section and my starting uh, my center point would remain the same but my starting uh, radius would be 150 and my ending radius would be 170 for my second and it will start from minus 90 and pretty much end at 90 and i'll recount okay so the second is added and the third the center point remains the same but my starting would be 170 sorry 170 and my ending radius would be 180 outermost radius would be 180 starts from minus 90 and ends at positive 90 and click on okay so the three sections are getting added here similarly you have to glue these three sections so don't forget that glue areas select the three areas and click on okay now glue to meshing mesh attributes on picked areas select the first area sorry select, select the first area and click on apply and this is my first material apply i'll select the second area i'll click on apply and i'll select the second material apply and select the third area and okay i'll select the third material and then click on okay right once the mesh attributes is done you have to define the number of elements number of elements i'll uh, say for example i'll delete all the elements to 50 i'll divide all the lines to 50 mm and or let me divide it into 100 mm we divide all the lines to 100 mm and click on ok right every line is getting divided into 100 mm now i'll mesh the lines mesh areas free i'll select all the areas and click on ok so number of elements is pretty much higher so as you can see here as the number of elements has uh, got beyond a particular limit uh, it can't uh, divide the elements so hence it has automatically reduced itself to a minimum number of elements along the way right so you have a minimum here you have a minimum length here uh, that's why you have to define the number of elements for each and every line separately so here you can find the small lines they need to have a smaller number of elements as and the longer lines along the length it needs to have a higher number of elements but as far as now this is a simple problem so i'll leave it as it is but this is not a proper meshing so i have a crude meshing here so i can find the meshing is improper here right so i have a fine meshing along the way but whereas these two sections as a coarse meshing coarse meshing means the element size is very much large when compared to the uh here so here here, here, here you can find the inner region you can find a uniform distribution of uh meshing whereas this is non-uniform meshing uh, this is not correct but as far as now the problem is a simple problem and uh, this meshing would give me a good result so i'll leave as it is i'll get to the loads i'll click on uh, apply inversion on lines i'll select the inner uh, semicircular ring and select the uh, heat transfer coefficient of 150 watt per m meter square so 150 into e power minus 6 watt per mm square and my temperature is 900 degrees celsius and i'll click on ok and convection along the out sorry out not these two rings i have to select the outermost i'll select the outermost now, this is the outermost ring i have to select the convection at the outermost ring to be 20 watt per uh, meter square so 20 to 10 to the power minus 6 watt per mm square and my atmospheric temperature is 30 degrees celsius i'll click on ok now let me solve the problem solution solve current lsn ok uh, yes, don't worry about that one 
to solve the problem that's due to the warnings are due to the meshing okay don't worry that uh thought this was a model solution and okay yeah now if you can recall the minimum temperature in the composite wall was around 560 the minimum temperature in the composite cylinder was around 520 whereas here the minimum temperature in the composite cylinder is 463 the reason being the surface area of a sphere is even more higher than that of a composite cylinder and composite wall uh, being the conditions being same i have taken all the conditions the radius the uh, conductivity material uh, thermal conductivity of all the three materials the uh, heat transfer coefficient and the innermost temperature outer temperature everything was same in all the three in order to compare the three uh, uh, composite bodies wall uh, wall cylinder and uh, sphere so once i compare you can very much clearly see that the heat transfer rate is highly improved in the case of a sphere and uh, next uh, price goes to the uh, uh, cylinder and finally wall comes to the third place right so the first place is for a cylinder sorry first place is for the sphere which has a very much decreased uh, uh, minimum temperature due to the increased surface area the sphere has a very much good surface area on the outside and the inside and that's why you can find a improved uh, heat transfer rate and uh, that's why you have a decreased temperature also the inner temperature you can recall the first uh, uh, composite wall was around 800 then you had around 780 or something if i can remember and uh, uh, here you can find even more decreased temperature of 712 this is due to the increased area okay now let me revolve this and show you how it would look so sorry i'll go for style i'll go for 2d axis one three uh, expansion uh say let me give one fourth of the expansion let me show you and uh, let me give sorry uh, yeah uh, it is being expanded um, it's not clear so let me uh, change that to one three before expansion <laughs> here you can find so how you can see how the uh sphere is getting revolved so if you give the complete expansion of uh uh, full expansion it was it would get completely covered and you can't see the inner area so don't give uh, full expansion in the gas of a sphere because you can't find the heat transfer just give the half expansion that would clearly show you the uh yeah here you can find the half expansion you can find the clear sphere uh, we are getting half either give half or one three by fourth expansion to see the inner uh, 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 temperature inner sections right so here you can find this you can just rotate this and you can keep like this and you can see the in the most temperature like this also save this uh 3d also 3d 3d image right uh save the 2d image and also save the 3d image also right okay and i'll just uh, switch back to the previous mode style size vertical expansion 2d i'll give one extension i'll click on okay let me friend view right save this image also save the 2d image and also save the three dimensional rotated image either take half or three by fourth expansion in case of a uh sphere because uh, if you give the full expression it will get completely covered right okay now similarly you can also check the thermal gradient and also you can check the so you get got some value but in order to see the exact values for all these three sections you can go for list results node solution thermal gradient and you can see the uh values right you can see the values here and similarly uh you can also see the thermal flux or heat flux which is what per meter square q by area so you can see the thermal flux along the uh, length of the uh, line right here okay so I also i can compare these values you can save this image also save all the three images temperature distribution in 2d and 3d so that would be two image then the third image should be uh, thermal gradient fourth image should be thermal flux and then you should also see the temperature in the intermediate so for that you have to give path operation define path and by note by nodes select these two nodes so Sorry, um, it's giving me a warning. I'll just zoom in a little bit and I'll select the extreme auto mode and also and I'll select the extreme. So it's giving me a warning. I'll just zoom into that location and I'll select the extreme auto mode. Right, so I have selected the node from this point to this point. So where I'll get, I'll get a change in temperature. You can select any point along the uh, radial length of the sphere. Right. this would be pretty much easier rather than selecting here right so anyway i'll get the same results 
so the number of data points should be 80 because the total length is 80 so so that you'll get the temperature for each and every mm right and let me give t e n t and i'll click on ok and now we have to plot the map on two path click on temperature and let me t e n p click on ok plot path items list path items click, click on temperature and ok so for each and every mm so first at the end of 50 mm you get a temperature of 691 then at the end of 8 mm that is the sorry at the end of 70 mm that is the interface between the second the second and third section and finally at the end of third section you'll get so copy this uh, list results and uh, save it in a notepad file and put it in your report and also plot the path item uh, plot the uh, path item on a graph and also save this graph also you have to save the graph you have to save the list result you have to save the temperature distribution for 2d and 3d model and also you have to save the thermal credit and you have to save the thermal flux image so you are going to pretty much save six uh, different images for your report for each and every case right so in your problem which i have given you you will get any one of these problems either composite wall or composite cylinder or composite sphere so try to identify your problem and try to solve your problem right and one more thing which i would like to tell you is that uh, so this is a simple case i hope you would have understood all the three problems uh, okay, so just a moment. Uh, okay, here yeah, I got it. Right. So once, so you can see this is the example of a composite wall, which I pretty much uh, solved now. And this is the pretty much example of a composite cylinder. It's given under here. This is a composite cylinder also, so you can solve all these problems. And one thing I like to show you uh, here. See, there are some cases where you get the temperature uh, thermal conductivity instead of a constant value, you'll get an equation and in terms of temperature right and uh, for this condition what you should do is that uh, find the minimum and maximum temperature so my, the minimum uh, temperature uh, here is minus 40 degrees celsius uh, minus 190 and my minus 40 these two are the temperature limits for this problem so what you do, should do is that open an excel file oh, okay so open an excel So here, what means uh, what it means is that the temperature, uh, the, the thermal conductivity of the material gets varied as the temperature is changing. So for various temperature, you'll get various thermal conductivity. That is the meaning, right? Whereas in previous case, we get get a constant uh, one. So in cases where uh, you have this variation in thermal conductivity with temperature, open an Excel file. So put the first column to be T and the second column to be K, right? So for visibility, let me increase the Let me TMK. Right. The temperature varies from minus 40 to minus 190. So let me change the temperature by uh, degrees Celsius of 10. Right. So minus 40, minus 50, minus uh, 60. Right. Similarly, let me get down to minus 190. Or uh, if the temperature limit is very much uh, higher, uh, then you can take an. I uh, can take some. Uh, uh, or a difference of 20 degrees Celsius or so, right? So here I'll get around uh, 16 points. 16 points. Now let me write this formula here. Uh, say for this here. Sorry, um, here I got a temp value. Right. Let me. I'm being. I'll just put it here. Right here. Uh, I'll just write down the formula here. Equal to 0 0.028. Uh, in two bracket of one, sorry, one bracket of one plus bracket of fifty in two bracket of ten to the power of minus, sorry, minus four. Close the bracket so, uh, and I'll multiply it with temperature which is from a to right and i'll close this i'll close this bracket and click on it yeah you get the thermal conductive value uh, which would be in the unit of uh, water okay here it's not given it's uh, pretty much let us take it as watt per meter kelvin. Ah, here it is uh, the k is it watt per meter kelvin so the unit system is watt per meter kelvin here you have the unit system is watt per meter kelvin so here uh, this is what you get the thermal conductivity value and as you pull down you can get the thermal conductivity value for 
various temperature so once you get this data once you get this table keep this here now if you go to analysis and come to the stage where you add the material properties material models and material models so here you will add a say you will add a constant thermal conductivity here instead of that what you should do go for material new model click on ok and click on isotropic here say right, take the first value which is 0 0.0224 right uh, so uh, make sure the unit is uh, if you have mm convert this into watt per mm kelvin whatsoever but as far as now i'll just uh, give it is 0 0.0224 right so 0 0.0224 and you should not leave this here you should give the temperature value here here my temperature is minus 40 sorry add temperature so, okay here my temperature is minus 40 for the first value next temperature 2 it is minus 50 sorry minus 50 and the corresponding thermal conductivity for that is 0 0.021 right 0 0.021 right. then again click on add temperature and my third value would be minus uh, 60 and my temperature would be sorry my thermal conductivity is 0 0.0196 so do this and keep on adding this temperature like this so i'll again add temperature and i'll go for minus 70 and my thermal conductivity is 0 0.0182 and i'll add temperature and go for uh, this and i'll click on minus 80 and my minus 80 my temperature will be 0 0.0168 keep on doing this till you reach the maximum limit so these two, two are my limit temperature of my problem minus 40 and minus 190 and uh, instead of i have given an increase in 10 degrees celsius but uh, as you increase this difference, so my, uh, say if you give 5, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65 and you go all the way to 190 or you can increase the temperature by 1, 1. So 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46 and you can still keep on going 180 but the thing is that you have to keep on adding all these things here. So as the um, uh, temperature difference the increases between these two and if we, uh, you can get a lot of data. So as this temperature uh, differences in, uh, decreases here, so if you uh, increase the temperature by one degree Celsius here, and you'll get a lot of data, and you if you put that, you'll get even more accurate. So uh, you, if you say if you have the uh, increase the temperature by 30, so 40, 70, then 100, then I uh, then I'll get limited data, and my accuracy for my problem would get decreased. So make sure that uh, you have uh, enough data so that the graph generator is good. So I'll leave it as it is now, but you can keep on going here, add temperature and keep on going there. And finally, once you click on graph, sorry, just give me this and click on graph. Uh, here you can find uh, the temperature getting, uh, temperature plot for the graph getting uh, shown in your, uh, here. So similarly, you can go all the way to minus 190 and click on OK. So this is how you add the, uh, add the thermal conductivity with increase uh, in temperature for your problem, right? So take the two extreme limits for your uh, problem, then uh, take the thermal conductivity value which res uh, changes with respect to temperature and uh, uh, input the temperature. So here the temperature is in degree centigrade. So input the temperature in degree centigrade as it is here and you'll get the thermal conductivity which is in watt per meter Kelvin. Then uh, whatever you want, if you want to change the unit system to amount, then correspondingly uh, change that and uh, give the input by adding the temperature for each and every case, right? So yeah. So this is how you uh, add the change in uh, thermal conductivity value with respect to temperature. So this is all much, pretty much uh, come to the end of my uh, problem. So I have given you the individual problems, right? So solve those problems and uh, you can, uh, if there is always, if there is any doubt, you can always contact me, right? Okay, so we'll see you and in another wonderful video tutorial for answers. So until then, see you, bye.